This will not be like my normal videos. It's not about the joys and thrills of adventuring. No, it's the exact opposite. I'm gonna show you exactly what a normal day is like, living and working on my sailboat Adventureborn, and how I manage it all in a boatyard in the Southern Caribbean where the sun will cook you. This is a real look at not only the work and suffering on a daily basis that goes into making my boat structurally and aesthetically ready for sailing and cruising the open ocean, but what it's like to live in an unclean and uncomfortable environment day in and day out. I wanna give you the truest sense of what it's like. I didn't even add any soundtrack so you can hear the cacophony of noises that are just every day here. I want this video to stand as an in-depth insight to anyone who's considering the sailing lifestyle, both logistically and emotionally. I want you to know just how unglamorous the sailing life can be because there are way, way, way too many YouTube channels that show the sailing life like everything's a dream in paradise, mine sometimes being one of them. But this is the realistic side of that dream. This is the personal price you gotta pay if you're not rich, but still want these good times. Many others can simply pay to have all this work done by a local professional. For me, that's not even an option if I wanna stay within my budget and be able to eat this month. I need to do everything myself so I can get back to this. For the past decade, I've been solo traveling around the world, facing all of life's adventures head on, locking horns and creating harmony with nature, and disrupting the mold to help others experience life in its richest, rawest form. Welcome to my life of adventure. Let's dive on in. some boat projects. <sighs> yeah, it's certainly not as dreamy waking up here in the boat yard with a boat torn apart for doing boat projects, as you can see. And not all boat yards allow you to live on your boat when you're here, but this one, Clark's Court here in Grenada, they let you do that. I like to get up every morning, go for a little walk. Remember what it is that I'm missing out on every day. Thankfully, I'm not too far from the ocean. Probably my least favorite thing is how I gotta get up and down the boat every day on this ladder in between my dinghy. The very ground you step on here is toxic. Let me show you what I mean. Oil stains. Oil stains. Look at this. I'm not even going to walk over that. That's what's left over after somebody did a bottom job on their boat, scraping all the plastic off. But you got to do this, though. I don't know how else you're supposed to keep a boat good in the water. This is just the place that it gets done. Adventure born here. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like being on the hard, but we don't have a choice. Gotta do it. They mostly keep all the monoholes back this way, and then you got the monster catamarans here. Most of the boats here, I would say, are being worked on by local professionals, but especially back here with all the other monoholes, we do the work ourselves. And I'll be honest, that path is probably keeping me sane so I can get away from all this, all this rust. This is also keeping me sane, this is view. I gotta tell you, even just being here on the dock, it's about 10 degrees cooler. It's so much hotter over there. Where's my boat? My boat is just on the other side of these catamarans. But from here, you can see how they all just blend together. Morning walk is a great way just to wake up, get my brain turned on. I'm gonna have some breakfast and do some journaling. Yeah. It's already too hot for a t-shirt. 
I like how I have my bedroom set up. Even just a little bit of fan on you makes a huge difference. I have a normal morning routine that starts up with waking up, rising from bed, drinking water, washing my face, brushing my teeth. Then I normally go for that walk that we were just on. After that, I dig into my first breakfast, my journaling, then I'll do some stretching. Then I'll do an upper body, lower body, or core workout, which today I may or may not do because I'm gonna be working hard in the boat yard and I know I'm gonna get my exercise in there. So instead I might sub that out for a long stretching session or a deep rollout with a foam roller on my back and my legs and uh, my arms. After this, then I'll grab my second breakfast, which will be probably some hard boiled eggs this morning. That gives me a good source of protein, which is much needed. I do a little bit of micro learning in the morning, usually lumosity or just something that gets my brain going. Then I'll do some sort of a reaction, mobility or balance training, and that could be a few different things depending on where I'm at and what I can do. But on the boat here, I'm a little bit more restricted in my options. And that also serves to help kind of wake my brain back up and get things a little bit more moving because doing the micro learning and breakfast and journaling gets me pretty sedentary. So I like to move around a bit. And after that, I get on the day. So as you can see, I don't have a ton of room, but just barely enough. I've cut my yoga mat to size so it fits perfectly in here. And you know, it's not ideal, but this boat can do everything, but maybe not everything super well. Of course, it'd be great to have one of those big catamarans, but then I'd have to pay for that and work on all that. And you know what, working on this boat is a lot easier than one of those bigger ones. I think stretching is super important to stay fit, healthy, and active, especially when you're working in a boat yard. All right, so here's what I'm gonna be working on this morning. Obviously, I'm gonna be starting back into the swim platform 4.0. Gonna be removing the peel ply and the tape and grinding off the fiberglass edges that are the excess. I'm going to epoxy smooth those edges for the final swim platform shape. After that, then I can move on to the transom slash boss. I'm going to sand slash grind down all the surfaces. This will probably be my hardest task today and uh, take a bit of finagling. So we'll see how that goes. And then I can start in on the boat bottom. But you know what? I've got a lot of work to do already today. Plus, I need to edit the very video that you're watching all in the same day because it is a Thursday. So let's just get to it. It's now 6.14, so it's still a little bit early, but I try to get started as early as possible just because the heat isn't on then. It makes a really big difference. Nobody else is still really up. It's pretty rare that I'll see anybody. I would say at about 7 o'clock is when I see people actually kind of climbing out of their boats, maybe, and starting their morning. I try not to use any power tools before 7. It's just the best I can do. But next up here is we got to start getting all these tools and everything that I need for my projects down below. Kind of hate this part, I'm not gonna lie, because it's just a lot of tedious work up and down, up and down. I smell bacon. Hey Jerry. Yeah. I know yesterday you said if I smell coffee I could ask you for a little bit. Yeah, you want some? No, I, I smell bacon this morning. You want bacon? Can I get one strip of bacon? Just to get me through this morning. Alright. You you're a good man. Even though we're not on the water, sailors and cruisers are still pretty great. And being able to just go right over and I mean, you see we're not very far apart here and just give it a knock and grab some bacon is pretty great. You are a gentleman and a scholar. No Thank you so much. Just... Yeah, yeah. It's not 7 a.m. and it's already 90 degrees, but you know what? Now I've got bacon. He knows good bacon. Thank you, Jerry. Now that I got all my tools down here, it's past seven, and I'm not even the only one cracking in this early, which is nice, but yeah, I can start working on what I was doing yesterday, which, there we go. Yep. I'm gonna have to take off all this tape and peel all this ply. It's a bear, let's get into it. That was a bear, but it wasn't quite as bad as doing yesterday's, so, I gotta trim off all this. It's probably gonna be the toughest part of my day. Let's get it going. <sighs> Taking a quick break, but thankfully, because of the multi-tool, being able to get that low, it's making this whole job go 10 times faster. Really happy I got this. Another part of boat yard life here is boats coming and going. 
these guys were here for like not even a week. <laughs> they got in and they got out and that's a smart way to do it. Like I said, don't become that guy that's there for 30 years. This is not a place you want to stay at for long. All right, now this thing's all smoothed out and now that I've got my epoxy out, I might as well work on the holes in my rudder. All right, my battery ran out for the time lapse. All right, so down here, we've got the holes that are now plugged. I was able to push some of this chop strand and biaxle into it as well. And then using an epoxy syringe, really get it in there. Kind of left a bunch sticking out, but then taped it over. So I'll come back through later with the sander, sand it so it's as smooth as the rest. Maybe then even give it a little bit more epoxy layer just after that. A little bit of epoxy barrier coat, then the paint, then it's done. Can't begin to overstate how important staying hydrated is. Blisteringly hot here and plenty of humidity. Good thing about the heat though, it's gonna make this cure a little bit faster. Should be nice. Definitely a few setbacks on it, it's not quite uh, turning out the way I want it to so far, especially with that tape in there. That's just how these boat projects go. They very rarely go according to plan. Normally you're gonna mess something up and just figure out a way around it. In this case, I know that the fiberglass goes around the other layer of fiberglass. We have glass on glass in there. Probably double check it, give it a, a light sanding all around, and then I'll hang it to dry, where it'll dry probably right over here for 24 hours to off gas anything from the epoxy and then and then tomorrow I can actually paint it with an epoxy primer. Once I'm done with that, I think then I can start to paint it front and back side. Once I'm done with that, then I can mount the stainless steel rub rail on it, you could say, which will also involve drilling and epoxy. Or you get the idea, it's a lot of steps. And then eventually I get to actually mount the darn thing. So we completed with one project here. Let's take a look at what else we've gotta do. We got that one done. Now we're looking at the boss, but looking at where the sun is right now, I'd be working in it. So I'm more inclined to wait a little bit and do a different project. Let's take a look on the propeller. The propeller is looking great. You should have seen what it looked like before. You can see the exact line where it's been soaking. Morning, morning. Hey, you got it early, good for you. Oh. You see those little bits of gray left on there. I said, I'll probably take my wire grinder to this in a little bit here, right? but it still looks absolutely great. I'm very happy with it right now and really just want to make sure that it's as smooth as possible. All right, let's cross some stuff off. We did peel, ply, and tape. That was a pain. We did grind off fiberglass edges. That actually was still a pain. <laughs> we epoxied smooth these other final edges. Yep. We can't mount it yet until it's all dried, so we'll save that for later. And now we gotta let that, what we've done there, cure for 24 hours. Yeah and then I can go back and sand it tomorrow and get on painting it. So we've done that, check. Epoxy rudder holes, check. Propeller, I don't know about wire grinding it anymore. It actually already looks so clean. I don't really want to do any more damage to it. So I'm not gonna wire grind it. Um, leaving it in for a final soak, that seems pretty good to me because it seems to be doing a really good job in there. I think what I'm probably gonna do is go down next and do a, maybe a hand wire to it. Now the back of the transom's gonna need some work, so I might as well get started in on that while I've already got all my other fiberglass supplies out here. That's uh, gonna be something I wanna do when the sun is at a little bit of a different angle, so for now I'm gonna get some lunch, try to relax a little bit. I'm in just my underwear, ooh la la. <laughs> and then I'll head back out into the heat. You. All right, just got back down from lunch here, and uh, the project's turning out really well. You can see it here. We're gonna have these little, these little edges here, a little bit uh, drippy, little drops of resin that harden there. That's no problem, I can hit that with the sander. All in all, this looks great as well. The rudder's looking really good. That turned out about as good as I thought it was going to, which isn't super great. This one turned out nicely. One thing I will say is uh, inevitability, but I'm not thrilled about it, is how much waste is generated by doing these sort of projects. I really don't know a better way to do it, and this is my first time doing peel ply, so I'm curious what it would have looked like had I not used this and generated a little bit more waste, but you know, if you live in a house, you can't say that you're not generating waste as well. You gotta do what you gotta do. Gotta pick all this up now, try to make the place clean and get as little more fiberglass into me as possible here.
Oh, a lot of sanding. That actually filled a little bit better than I thought it would. Next time I'm working with some epoxy, I'm gonna come back over and just scrape it into there, whatever I can. Uh, maybe not actually. I think I'll just wait till I'm using the epoxy primer. Uh, Interlux 2000 epoxy primer is a barrier coat that's gonna do pretty much it's epoxy and paint together is really what it is. And uh, that'll fill these little cracks pretty well. It might be better for me to do a little bit of sanding on the on the hull and I'll save the transom for tomorrow. A lot of to do today, but we're getting her done. All right, now the few places that need to have the barrier coat can have it now that it's sanded. Just trying to stay motivated throughout the day is like half the battle here with the heat and the dirt and the dust and the fiberglass and the chemicals. It's taxing. All right, look at that propeller. That is some very, very shiny bronze. I'd like to keep it that way as much as possible. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna hit it with some acetone just to get any other impurities off because I really want the very expensive propeller paint to stick. Uh, something kind of interesting about propeller paint though I'm thinking about now is that I can save part of the can and if my propeller does become fouled up again, I can easily swim down, remove it, pull it off, bring it up, scrub it, wash it, dry it off, do whatever, and then put the paint on and put it back in. So I might not use the whole can on this one, actually. Let's see what the instructions say. But now I'm gonna start picking up uh, any other tools I've got, bringing those up, and finish out my last project here as it's now approaching, ooh, four o'clock. Yeah, I'm pretty done, and I still have a lot of editing to do, so we'll get to that next. So I'm now actually reading this, and on the outside it says in big letters like paint for outdrives, outboards, and props. And I'm like, that's perfect. And then in here they're like for aluminum or aluminium outboards, outdrives, and hulls. And they're like bare aluminium. Like previously painted, blah blah. But not exactly talking about a bronze propeller here. So yes, yeah, it's kind of how boat projects go is you get the wrong thing or this happens or that happens or whatever it is, but it never ends up being exactly what you want. And I feel like if you're ever building a house, you can get away with stuff like this a lot easier on a boat. Sometimes it's the end of the world. So who knows, this might dissolve my propeller for all I know, but I'm gonna put it on there. So in closing, living on a boat, on land, in a boatyard, in the heat of the Southern Caribbean, isn't great. It's character building, if you maintain an optimistic and positive attitude. My personal plan and advice for anyone who's planning on doing boat work at a boatyard or buying a boat that needs work is simply this. Do the projects you absolutely need to do on the hard and on land, do them there. Then do everything else out on the water. Whether at anchor, a mooring ball, or a dock, any three of those is better than being at a boatyard. You'll have a better quality of life, plus you'll actually figure out a lot faster what you really need done on the boat versus just think will be cool. When you're in the water, where things float. Second, don't try to make your sailboat perfect. That's a fool's gambit. Make it good enough and safe enough that you can get out on the water and go make some memories, have some experiences, and have an adventure. That's what a boat is meant for, to be used. My motto has always been and continues to be, if it works and looks good enough from a drone, it's good enough for me. That's it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this whole video, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Cheers. 
Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For an exclusive, in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle, and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you.